Hello and welcome to another Parodis video. My name is Gideon and this is going to be a quick discussion about the firearm amnesty that's uh, started on the 1st of August. It's a two-part video. This is just going to talk about the amnesty itself and my concerns regarding the amnesty. And in the second video, which will be uploaded a bit hopefully later this week, we'll unpack how useful it could possibly be for the people sitting with expired firearm licenses in order to get themselves back to being legal. So without further ado, I'm going to jump right in. For people who have been long-term readers of my blog, of my website, of my Facebook page, long-term watchers of my YouTube channel, you're probably all very firmly acquainted with the fact that I'm not a fan of amnesties at all. Firstly, they do not fulfill their supposedly marketed purpose as it's sold to the public that criminals are going to use an amnesty to surrender the tools of their trade and make us a more peaceful, loving and less violent society. That's never ever happened. In fact, the last big amnesty was in, I think, 2011, and our murder rate started a never-ending increase from 2011 onwards. Right after the amnesty, it kept going up and it hasn't stopped declining, or rather, it hasn't stopped going up. It never declined since. So, amnesties and murder rates, no correlation, at least no positive one. Then we also had Colonel Chris Brinsler, who went and stole thousands of the previous amnesty guns, sold them to violent criminals and gangsters on the Cape Flats, who then committed thousands, possibly upon thousands of murders with these guns, many of them kids being murdered. And um, those are guns that were once upon a time safe in civilian hands, got leaked to criminals by corrupt cops, of which there are plenty going around, clearly. And uh, yeah, you know, those are murders that probably would never have happened if the civilians who owned those guns uh, were allowed to keep them or weren't coerced into handing them in. So quick unpacking about my major concerns about the amnesty itself. Amnesty was proclaimed to start on the 1st of August. Uh, no directives have been issued to any DFOs or police stations yet that I'm aware of as time of recording this. So the police have an amnesty. They just don't know how it's supposed to work. They have been, haven't been informed. There's no structures put in place. No information has been provided to the people who need to know. So it's a complete shit show, for want of a better word. Now, regarding the concerns of Harbour, there are several. Okay, firstly... Since this amnesty is clearly aimed at the 500 to 700,000 people sitting with expired firearm licenses, and we're going to get to the ridiculousness of that in a moment, five to 700,000 uh, firearms need to be handed in across the country in a period of six months. That 100, that's 100,000 firearms per month on average. I would like to know how the SAPs, the SA Police Service, intend to process 100,000 firearms a month. How are they going to take custody, keep, uh, we talk about Safe King moment, how are they going to take custody of these firearms, uh, record them in the registries, the various registries that they need to when they take possession of them in the, another registry when they get uh, booked in for safekeeping? Uh, what are the processes? How do they plan logistically on coping with the sheer volume and number of firearms being handed in? Um, yeah, and how are the safekeeping facility is going to cope with this volume, okay? Secondly, how do the South African Police Service intend to comply with the mandated due care of these firearms, which we're hoping many people are going to apply for new licenses for? So these guns need to be looked after. They can't get damaged. They can't get lost. Worse, they can't get stolen by corrupt cops and sold to criminals and gangsters and, and violent, you know, other violent criminals in South Africa, which has happened before. There is a precedent that this has happened before. We know the South African Police Service are woeful custodians of their own farms. We know police stations get robbed for farms, as happened uh, in their scope. And I can't remember the name of the town off the top of my head, but uh, I'll go find the article and link it in the description. Um, there are so many cases of break-ins, theft out of uh, SAP-13 uh, lockers, of firearms, uh, the police lose on average eight times per capita more firearms than civilians do. So these guns were safer in civilian hands. We now are forced by law to surrender them to the SAPs who are far worse custodians. What processes are in place that these guns will be looked after? Because it's the responsibility of the state to look after them and ensure that they don't end up in the wrong hands and that they're not damaged. Thirdly, uh, how do they intend to, with transparency and due adherence to administrative justice, process 
the potential hundreds of thousands of license applications and process them timelessly for these guns. Obviously, the longer they take to process these applications, the longer it takes for those applications to be approved, the longer it takes for the people who applied for the guns to get them back in their custody, the longer they are lying in the South African police services care and the greater the chances are of these guns going missing or lost or damaged. So what are the processes regarding that? No, you know, that no one's informed us. The police at least haven't informed the public what their plans are regarding that. Uh, <clears throat> fourth, ballistic testing, which is apparently mandatory. How do they plan on ballistically testing 700,000 farms? Like which facility is going to cope with this and how long is it going to take? Uh, because the man hours we're talking here about are extensive, especially lots of guns uh, might be in strange exotic calibers that you cannot readily find ammunition for. Many of the guns might have parts missing or broken that mean that they are still firearms, but they are not you know, they, by the legal definition. But there are broken firing pins, there are missing springs, there might be all sorts of things wrong with some of these guns that mean that they're not fireable as such. You can't expect the owner of the now illegally owned firearm to go spend money uh, to render the gun serviceable parts that they might not even be able to find how are you going to ballistically test these guns like what's the plan there there's all sorts of questions that need serious answers that we're just not getting the answers to it's even possible that the police themselves didn't even think of these things to get to the ridiculousness of the situation we're in right now why are 700,000 or 500,000 people I don't know the exact number, criminalized. Why did the Supreme Court of Appeal go and say, you know what, that's fine. Uh, you, you, at one minute to midnight, you're a law-abiding citizen. One minute later, because you failed to do paperwork on time, you failed to submit paperwork on time, you are now a criminal. Your property can be co confiscated because you're an unlawful possession of a firearm. Uh, of which the license has expired, and you face a potential penalty of a 15-year prison sentence, which is extensive. Are we going to give 700,000 people 15-year prison sentences? Are we only going to give some of them these prison sentences? And how do you choose who you prosecute and who you don't? It's an unworkable fuck-up that has been caused because the act is so poorly written, it makes no provision for late renewal. And this is short-term what our lawmakers should be fixing. Parliament failed us here. Yes, if you fail to renew a license on time, you should not have done that. That was a stupid thing to do. Why are you not paying attention? I get people forget. I get a lot of things, okay? But we should all be appraised of the fact that this is a serious business. Um, you should have renewed your license. However, you don't deserve to go to jail for forgetting to renew, and you certainly don't deserve to, to <laughs> face a, a criminal record or a prison sentence for it for what's essentially a victimless crime and is an administrative crime in, in name only. So... Get that fixed. Amend the act immediately. Amend it like right now. Make provision for late renewal subject to a fine. Then from there we can move on and say, what's the only rational way of fixing this problem that it never ever happens again? We need to change the licensing system entirely. Every single firearm having its individual license is an unworkable fuck up. License the person. I'm a licensed farm owner. Other people are licensed farm owners. When you comply with the provisions of the act, you are the license holder. Your guns just go on a registry. There's no expiry date. Um, it, it, there is no necessity for there being expiry date. There's no point of it because the expiry of the license and the renewal procedure is not a safety net to catch you if you become a criminal or a bad man. Section 102 and 103 of the Act already exist that covers that at any time. You don't need to wait to renew. So anyone who's selling you that there's a point to renewing is talking bullshit. There isn't. That's what we got to do. First off, amend the Act, make provision for late renewal subject to a fine. Secondly, amend the whole bloody thing, license the person, register the farm. Let's stop this bullshit from ever happening ever again. Because this is nonsense. Okay. Video will follow regarding how to make use of the amnesty. Uh, subject to a bit of reading. Thank you for watching this. If you like what we do, you can purchase Burger to his coffee either in uh, bean form or ready pre-ground via the link below. And the apparatus gets a cut. Or if you're not into coffee, but you're into apparel, um, you can buy our caps, hoodies coming very soon, as in hopefully this week. 
uh, on the web store, the Paratus web store. We ship them to you via the courier guy. It's been working wonderfully. 60% plus of the stock's already been sold. New stock is being ordered. So get yours now before it runs out or get yours when we get the new stock. Link to the shop also below, as is the zapper and snap scan in the credits if you want to send us some money for paying or uh, for our bandwidth. Thank you for watching. Hope this was useful to you. Have a fantastic rest of your day.